All right, how's it going, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Forward Thinking Founders, where we talk to founders about their companies, their visions of the future, and how the two collide. Today, I'm very excited to be talking to Michelle Tandler, who is the founder of Life School. Welcome to the show. How's it going? Thank you. I'm very excited to be here. It's going pretty well. Awesome. I am glad it's going well. You are building something like a school because you have school in the name, which means I'm very excited to learn more about what you're doing. For people that are listening that don't know what Life School is, uh, what are you working on? Yeah, so I'm glad you mentioned that the word school is in the title. Um, I would say I do plan to build a school right now. It's more of a series of courses, um, but the ultimate goal is for it to become a real school on the internet. I would describe Life School as an online education platform um, that is focused on teaching life skills. So essentially what we do is we research topics related to life skills, things like how to fold a bit of sheet or how to sew a button or how to sharpen knives, um, research them heavily, look at all the sources that are out there, books, textbooks, um, old and new, you know, old, I'm looking at old home ec textbooks, articles, blogs, YouTube videos, and then summarize uh, the biggest takeaways and sort of the TLDR in short lessons that are written and now also recorded. Um, and the way they're written is similar to an email you might receive at work. Uh, my background is in consulting and strategy and operations. And so I'm trying to write these lessons in a style that I was used to receiving at work um, that I think is sort of missing from most of the media world. So can you share, you already shared a couple, but I'm curious to dive a little deeper. This feels like something that is non-obvious, but something that pretty much everyone needs. I know I, you know, I, I could use some of those things. So can you share what are some of the topics that you've written on or done podcasts on? Like, you know, if someone signed up today, like what's an example of some stuff they would, they would get? Sure. So the first two categories we're focusing on are cooking and cleaning. I'm really digging hard into cooking. Um, there's just so much to cover and cooking uh, how do I explain this? I say cooking is where the original inspiration came from. I didn't grow up learning how to cook. And when I graduated from college and I couldn't really afford takeout, I started learning and found it very difficult to learn. So I, I want to start with cooking because it um, was something that was really near and dear to my heart of the pain I felt in my 20s as I was trying to become an adult and become self-sufficient and you know run my own household for the first time. Um, I'm also sprinkling in some cleaning because I think that that's both really important and also I've gotten a lot of requests for it. So there's right now some stuff on kitchen cleaning. Uh, the, first, the first course out on kitchen cleaning um, is the daily kitchen cleaning routine. Next up is the weekly kitchen cleaning routine. There's a couple other things around clothing, care, and laundry. Like you'll find how to depill a sweater um, and how to fold a fitted sheet, how to sew a button is about to release. But the other categories are on pause for now. I can only focus on so much, but down the road, we'll have things on car maintenance and renting your first apartment and personal finance and um, etiquette, things like that. So can you dive into a little bit of the user, kind of the experience if someone wanted to try this? I know you're, you know, from the conversation before we started recording, you're experimenting, which is what you have to do as a founder. If someone was interested in, in, in life school and wanted to, to sign up, is it, how would they sign up? Um, and, you know, what form does it take? Yeah, right now we're experimenting with a bunch of different go-to-market approaches. So we're sort of <laughs> scattered around. I'd say there's two main places to receive the lessons. One is in the Substack, where you can go to lifeschool.substack.com. The other is in the app I'm building on the Glide platform, which is a no-code platform, and that's trylifeschool.com. Um, the app right now has some videos and photos and the short written lessons in bullet style format. The Substack has those same written lessons in addition to an audio recording where I just read them aloud and they're about one minute long. Um, some of the content's also on Instagram account and uh, we also have Twitter. So you're very... I guess, in my opinion, like mo taking a very modern approach to building a company, like you're building on no code apps, you're using a very, you know, quickly growing tool like Substack, like you're very like with it, you know, you're, you know, I'm curious how I, I want to start with or not start with, but I want to continue with um, the glide and, 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 and that no code app. I, I meet a lot of founders that are less with it and less knowing kind of how this all works. And they're like, Oh, I have an app idea. I got to hire a developer for 10 grand from, you know, I'm just like, no, you know it. So I'm curious, what was your experience like building with Glide? Um, you know, and, and also the, the hard parts too. I'm sure it wasn't all great. So like, love to hear, you know, what was it like building your no-code app? Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad you asked that. So I'm a huge fangirl of Glide. Actually, the founder of Glide is my good friend since college. 
So about a year ago, I went over to the WeWork where the, the team was working and prepped them all for Y Combinator and sort of fell in love with the Glide app in the meantime. I'm a former VC and they asked, if, you know, my friend David uh, asked if I would help him out and get his team um, whipped into shape and grill them. So I did and it was like, I sort of just fell in love with the company. I, I've tried to invest, it's competitive. Um, but uh, so I, I knew about Glide and then I, but I didn't just actually jump straight into building on Glide. I spent a fair amount of time in the winter thinking about how can I get this content out in the world to prove that there's a there there before I just start spending all my savings or raising money. Um, and so I looked at a bunch of different platforms and, and the reason I, I went this direction is I was looking at a lot of YouTube videos about the topics I need to learn for video production. I was learning about how to use a camera, how to do food photography, like how to do all these things so that I could create the content. And I started realizing that all of these creators were monetizing off of YouTube. They had like Kajabi courses or Teachable or Podia. They had blogs, they were selling PDFs. And I was reading about Kayla Sweat Fitness. It started with a PDF and it exploded. And then she you know, bootstrapped her app to $100 million. And I started realizing there's this huge trend happening of creators around the world that are using these um, software platforms to get their message and skill sets into the world. And I found it very inspiring. So yes, while a lot of people were saying, just raise money and hire a developer and then you know, do ads and like go build it, I thought I need to figure out what this product should be. Like, what is the format people want? Do they want videos? Do they want audio? Do they want pictures and text? Like what length, what format? And the only way I can really be lean and experiment quickly is if I have control over the ability to get the content out there. So I looked at all these platforms for a while I started building on Teachable actually. Um, and then I ultimately came back to Glide. I just felt that having the app on the phone, having it be mobile first and native first was the most important thing. I was seeing from YouTube traffic that 94% of the viewers of my videos were coming from a phone and it just became so clear that it had to be mobile first. So I went to Glide. And you're in a kind of unique position where you um, you mentioned you you were a VC, um, which means you understand how the how it works. You understand how this ecosystem works, and now you're you're a founder building this company. H how do you think about the future with Life School? Like you know how it all works. You know like the incentives for VCs and bootstrapping and all that. You know. So do you do you have like a a plan knowing how all that works of what you want to do, or are you just kind of taking it day by day and taking opportunities as they come? I guess how do you view you know, the landscape, the fact that you've kind of been around, you know, for a second with the VC world. So this is the question that keeps me up at night. This has been probably the, t the toughest, most challenging question running through my mind for the past two months, which is when do I raise? Do I raise? How much to raise? Who do I raise from? Um, because I have a lot of VC inbound interest right now, which has been surprising, actually, um, because I think it's just so early and I don't really have uh, enough to show yet, but there has been some inbounds. So the short answer is yes. I do think that this is a venture backable company and that this, um, that the ultimate vision to really go hard at the DIY and self-help space and have tons of teachers teaching on all sorts of topics will really require venture backing. Like, I think that, I think that it will take too long and be too slow to completely bootstrap this thing. And it opens it up to threat from competitors. With that said, I think now is too early to raise. And I, while it's tempting to do that, um, I think that there's a discipline that is forced when you are bootstrapping that um, I can feel is working. So for example, I've heard that some um, of the other large um, online education media oriented companies are spending something like $300,000 a course to produce. And right now I'm spending virtually zero dollars except for my own time to produce a course. I mean, I'm amortizing just the gear over, you know, the, um, the, all, the only costs I've had are the gear and a couple of software platforms. So I think if I had raised, even just like a month ago, I might've had a bunch of video producers tell me, oh, it's gonna cost, you know, $1,000 to make this two minute video or writers saying it's gonna cost $1,000 to do this, it'll take 10 hours to do this. Because I'm doing it myself, I can say, actually, I don't believe it should cost that much. It took me an hour to make this video. It took me four hours to write this lesson um, and, and to come in with a point of view on, on cost. And that's, that was really important to me because I, I don't know what the willingness to pay is on the customer side yet. And I need to make sure this is lean as possible. Yeah. I, I'll, I'm excited to see where it lands. You definitely, you definitely are thinking like I, I talked to all sorts of founders and all different boats and, and you definitely are thinking about it the right way, at least, at least in my view, what would you say is the, 
the big, let's say, look, let's say at some point you raise just hypothetically and you go big, you know, th- you know, this, this company blows up, you know, 10 years from now, what does, uh, what does it look like? I guess in other words, what's, what's the big vision for life school? Yeah. Well, so a couple of months ago, I was in New York and I walked into the Amazon store and the first thing you see when you walk into the Amazon store, it's near Herald Square, is a huge bookshelf with the word self-help above. And um, I took a look at this and I had this moment where I was like, oh, this is dated. This is really dated for millennials. I don't have friends reading books about childcare the way my mom did. My mom had like 15 different books on raising babies. And then she had 15 books on teenagers and everything. Growing up, she had books on everything, heart health and, you know, um, personal finance. And she had Emily Post etiquette. Actually, I have it now at my house, but she had all the books. And I think that was the way people learned um, for many generations. I think the future of life school is a comprehensive, um, really, a, what's the word? Not like a, not an encyclopedia, but a pretty comprehensive um, guide to all of the types of things that would be in that aisle. So childcare with taught by a nurse on, who's an expert in, you know, infant care or personal finance taught by, you know, b- taught by experts across every different type of situation um, that you could find yourself in everything from like getting out of debt to saving for retirement. Um, I guess I I have like the ultimate vision is for this to be quite large and quite comprehensive and really meet people where they're at. If you're a 20 year old and you're just graduating from college, you need to learn like, how do I rent an apartment and make sure that I'm doing, you know, checking off the right, uh, checking by what's the word, (laughs) how do I make sure I'm doing things right? Um, and also if you're in your sixties and you're thinking about how do I care for my aging parents who, um, you know, and how do I think about like, do I put them in a nursing home or not? So I think that's the ultimate vision is to help people with all those topics that maybe um, aren't really served up in an easy format right now. I feel like it's, I don't know if you don't like this word. So if you do, I'm sorry, but it feels like it's like the ultimate um, company or school to help you adult, like adult, it's like <laughs> adulting academy. Like pretty, like Eddie, like, you, like I, I'm actually curious, like for the second, this, then we'll go to the last question, but like, it, it, it is like that's a phrase that is kind of popular with Gen Z and maybe millennials too. Uh, yeah, probably millennials as well. Like, do you ever? Would you ever like adopt that type of messaging? Um, uh, or are you? Tra- or yeah, I don't know. how do you feel about just adulting or something like that? I don't, I I don't have strong feelings on the word either way. I think that that's right. I think that there's certain elements of this that are definitely adulting. But like, what is really adulting? It means living your life and having a good quality of life, right? So, actually, the word that I think about a lot is home ec. And I've done a lot of research on home economics. Um, if you were to go into my apartment right now, you'll see old home ec textbooks scattered all over the place. Uh, I ordered them from as early as like 1910, 1940, 1994 editions. And I've studied the trajectory of how that course um, evolved in America. It was taught in every single public school in America for almost a hundred years. And it was sort of defunded and wound down throughout the 90s. And if you look at the home ec textbooks from like, I have a teacher's edition from 1994, it is extremely comprehensive. They're talking about what are your civic duties? Why should you vote? How do you care for elder people? What are their social needs? Like, how do you um, engage with disabled people? How do you think about race? Like, they were going deep, um, way beyond sewing and cooking. And so I, I guess was, I think that that probably was essentially a course in adulting. It's how to be, um, you know, a contributing member in society and have um, a high, like some of the ads even I've watched in videos for home ec talk about improving your quality of life. So I, that stuff resonates with me quite a bit. And I think it's a shame that those courses were wound down. Um, one, another part of my ultimate dream is actually to make sure that all this content is free for students. And I think um, some of this knowledge is just so basic. I think everyone should know certain things like how to change a bike tire or like why you should have renter's insurance. Um, you know, what to do in a, in a blackout or an emergency, things like that. So yeah, I don't, I guess to answer your question, I, I'm okay with the word adulting, but I think that this goes deeper than that. Yeah, definitely deeper. I agree. And I appreciate the, the, the added context there. So for my last question, um, you know, you, 
have a big vision. You're going to need a lot to make it happen. You, you might see them as some, you might need some employees, maybe investors at some point, definitely customers, but, but you'll definitely need at the minimum, some help from the forward thinking founders community. So for my last question for you, what is an ask that you have from the forward thinking founders community or the listeners that we can help you out with to make your vision come just a little sooner? Oh, interesting. All right. Well, I'm going to just share what comes to my mind first, which is I'm looking for a very special video editor and I've been having a rough time finding the right person um, or producer. So video, um, you know, anyone can slap together a couple uh, clips. Like as I've learned recently, I made my first iMovie two months ago and now I'm using Final Cut Pro and I've learned a lot in the video editing world, but there's a difference between good video and great video. And I'm looking for a video editor who has an amazing sense of humor, who can make, make boring things funny, who's creative and a little quirky and irreverent, um, who's also got a real like creative bent and isn't afraid to like try new things. And um, I looked through a lot of profiles of video editors and a lot of it there are seen very geared towards corporate. This is a little different. I really, I'm, I need to make like cleaning a toilet fun. So that is something I'm looking for. Um, I think that that person also could potentially be a co-founder and just depending on the profile, but uh, that's, that would be the unicorn in my life right now. I actually think I have someone for you. So I'll talk to you about that after we stop recording. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And if, and if anyone has anyone in mind uh, that can, that might be able to, to help you with your video needs for the final question, what is um, ways to get in touch with you? What's your website? What, you know, do you have Twitter? Do you have an email? I guess, how can people get in touch and learn more about what you're doing? Yeah, I'd say just email me. I'm Michelle at trylifeschool.com. Um, I'm also on Twitter at trylifeschool, Instagram, trylifeschool. I'm sort of everywhere. And if you want to contact me personally directly, I'm Michelle Tandler. Um, and I'm also <laughs> available on the web. So I'm pretty open. All right. You all heard it here first. Welcome, uh, or not welcome. Thank you for coming on to the uh, Forward Thinking Founders podcast. R really can tell how clear of a vision you have and, you know, and the steps you are to kind of get to where you want to go. And I have a high hopes and we'll be, you know, watching from afar you dominating this market. So thanks for coming on and uh, hope you have a good rest of your day. Thanks, Matt. It's an honor.